Hello, everyone. Here's another podcast of On the Narrow Path with Katrina on Tim's channel, right? On Tim McHyde's channel. Well, I'm going to show you around a little bit um, here. It's really hard for me to hold the phone sideways, so you'll have to forgive me. I know you love to see the walks better and everything, but this helps me to be able to keep the camera more stable. But I'm going to show you where I'm at. I'm walking again in the woods, and I'll just show you around here. Let you see a narrow path. Here, see, that's where I'm walking. That's where I'm walking to. And I'll show you where I'm walking from. It's beautiful out here. I'm picking up strawberries again for breakfast tomorrow morning. Uh, this is in between two fellowships that Tim and I uh, work with online uh, on the internet. All right, so you're going to see behind me where I've come from and not where I'm going. But we'll walk together and enjoy the day. It's lightly raining here, so I'm hoping that it will support me while I'm walking today. Uh, made it back yesterday from driving with our son Caleb back here. We have um, some residency uh, things to do here to uh, put in for residency. Every, every so many years you have to renew for residency. So we're working with that and it looks like God is doing it again. He's pulling everything together uh, close to last minute for everything to work out and help us to know exactly where he wants us and if he's moving us or whatever he chooses to do. So that's kind of an update of what we're doing today. Um, and I wanted to talk with you about something that is kind of touchy, it seems to me. Um, and I want to just up front share with you that, that if you wanted to, you could probably find reasons about probably anything that I say to take offense. And um, I'm not trying to offend. I'm trying to love. And sometimes love is talking about stuff that's just no fun to face or look at. <laughs> so I'm going to do that because I love you. And so we're going to talk about something and <clears throat> I'm going to share something that we can start learning how to exercise our discernment, right? So everybody's going, um, you know, when we're talking about spiritual discernment, people believe that it's just a gift. It's something that's developed and everybody can develop a gift of better discernment. The biggest part of discernment, now I'm not talking about spiritual discernment as in spirits, you know, talking about if it's a, it's a spirit from God or a spirit from Satan. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about um, uh, judging spiritual matters. Mm -hmm. And many times we use judging spiritual matters as a way to uh, be more putting people down or putting ourselves down instead of healthily being able to see the issue and then be able to go to the next steps of seeing mercy, seeing Christ's blood, and faith that God will help correct the issue that you're seeing that's bad. Okay, so it, you have to go through in order for true discernment of God the way it's supposed to be done is, yes, judgment. Judge and be able to see if something is really God's way or not, if it's really functioning properly. And then as soon as you've judged whether it's that way or not, and do the best you can with your discernment of knowing scripture and knowing love. And, and here's the best way to judge anything, absolutely anything. Does it um, cover three categories? Does it love God with whole heart and might and soul? And does it love neighbor as self? So love God, love neighbor, love self for the love of God. See, so it's all wrapped up in a pretty present called love, right? So that is the two greatest commandments according to uh, God, to God the Father and his son, who was the messenger of that message sent from God to give to us. Okay, so now we're going to talk about something that I've been considering and hearing over the years. There's even more like on Facebook and, and discussion articles on the concept of introverts and extroverts. And um, I decided that we needed to look at this because I see that people in general, I've seen um, a possibility that they're using it as a way to 
justify where they're at. And I think it's important to evaluate where you're at uh, and, and use it as a way to evaluate where you're at. And it's important to move on and say, okay, this is where I'm at and to understand where I need to go. Not just stay where you're at. Staying stagnant, staying where you're at and saying, this is just as I, just what I am. You have to love me just as I am. It's about loving you where you're at for the moment and believing that God in you is growing you into his image. It's a growth forward. So it is an acceptance of where you're at and a belief and a hope that God with you brings you into perfection, right? And so it's the whole package. And so it's important to evaluate. So I'm going to ask you to put on your love glasses <laughs> um, and start evaluating. So I got down the psychology terms for introvert and extrovert. And I would love for you to come with me on discerning if these definitions, um, if being either one of these things is fully godly. Okay, so here we go. All right, so the, what the, the game is, the glasses that we have on is love God with our whole heart, might, and soul, and love our neighbors ourselves. And now the definitions, and let's see how much it, it comes together. Both of them, uh, both of the definitions come together under uh, fulfilling those laws or maybe falling a little bit short. All right, so here we go. An introvert. Notice these words, it's both in extrovert and introvert. It will start that says uh, uh, a person primarily or predominantly is this way. So more on the scale towards this direction, right? Introvert is a person predominantly concerned, notice the concern, with their own thoughts and feelings rather than external things. So from my perception, an introvert is someone who, who has, has a, um, a predisposition to think about what's going on inside them and how things are affecting them more than what's going on for other people um, or things and, and what's, what happens to what's going on outside. Okay, um, And then an extrovert is a person concerned predominantly or primarily with the physical and social environment. Okay, so they're less concerned on themselves and more concerned on everything outside of them. Okay, so these are the definitions according to Google. <laughs> Dictionary, right? Dictionary definitions. And um, I want to break this down and let's look at this. Um, I want to also uh, break down uh, people. I, I want to talk about introvert and extrovert. I have a, to make an example, I have a, uh, a couple. They're, they're really good friends of mine who are missionaries. And um, the man is very quiet and the woman is very uh, talkative like me. <laughs> And we get along, we love each other so much. We just, we just really love each other. And I will tell you that both of them, even though one is super quiet, super quiet, but when he talks, I'm telling you, it's like you get blasted back with wisdom and you go, what just hit me? It's amazing. He has, he has an amazing gift. And, um, the woman, who's a, a close friend of mine, she has an ability to remember things. She actually has a photographic memory. <laughs> and it's really cool to watch what she can remember. She learns very fast because she has that photographic memory. Um, and she uh, balances out really quickly with education. It's a lot of fun to watch them. And she is very much into helping people out and service. They're both very, very oriented towards God. They love God. They're missionaries. Obviously, they love him with their, their whole heart. And they love people. They both love people and are considerate and concerned about other people. Um, 
uh, the, the, the husband is very good with building things and um, fixing things for people. And he's always thoughtful about helping other people with those gifts and making sure that they're okay and uh, considering them. And he loves to do that. And she, they both love cooking, so they'll both cook. And <clears throat> she loves um, to serve in many capacities. She'll, she'll sing, she'll talk to someone, she'll be there for someone. She will um, work in the kitchen and clean. She, she's good with cleaning uh, when other people are not. And she'll go in the background and do all the stuff to support for everyone else to be able to socialize while she's in the background uh, doing the, the things in the background to help create that space. Both of them are extroverts right because uh, to a certain degree actually i would say i would say that they're something bigger and better than that i have a term that i made up that i'm going to share with you and um but i want to show you that you can be quiet or loud and be concerned with other people and um <clears throat> and so that can be more of an extrovert okay so an introvert a person predominantly concerned with their own thoughts and feelings rather than external things. They would be not necessary. They could, they could as well be more um, quiet or more seen. Okay. So uh, if you're concerned about yourself, you could be a more... Um, I'm not saying you would be, but I'm saying these are possibilities. You could be a more controlling person who leads a group of people to get something done, but it's because of something you need, something you want, something to build something for you. And although you look like um, you're working with a lot of people and you have a lot of influence and you're doing a lot of stuff, you're doing it from a place of self-absorbed. Mm-hmm. And then, so you can still be an introvert, right? Or you could be an introvert by being the quiet type, which is the stereotype that we have usually. The stereotype is, is an introvert is quiet, right? And those are the shy people that are kind of like, um, they find things outside them, um, maybe sometimes uh, a little overwhelming to their senses and something that makes them feel imbalanced or, or scared or maybe even it's just too loud and they get very tired. Hmm? And, um, or they feel socially inadequate and inadept and kind of scared of people and, and probably hurt by many of them, could be. Um, and those are the more quiet type. So you can see that you can't tell if somebody's an introvert or an extrovert just off of their mannerisms and the way they are. All right, and so that's the first evaluation. So if you look at these two terms, if somebody is predominantly concerned with their own thoughts and feelings, how does that relate to loving God with your whole heart, might and soul, and loving your neighbors yourself? All right, so I would say that one of the elements, now see, you'll probably go to the bad, oh, it's bad to be an introvert. Or, or you might say, oh, I'm bad because I'm an introvert. That's, that's not the point. That isn't the point. The point is to evaluate. So let's look. If you're predominantly concerned only, you know, more on the scale, the furthest you go off the scale to where you're not balanced, um, you may have some some things to work out and we all do by the way we all have we're, we're on the scale probably need to balance out better and better that's that's the whole point is to grow um, if you're predominantly concerned with your own thoughts and feelings your own your own thoughts and feelings are really important if you look at the two greatest commandments loving God with your whole heart and might and soul and loving your neighbor as yourself you have to consider yourself to be able to, as in conjunction with the understanding and perception of God and other people and yourself and consider that whole dynamic. So therefore, 
if you're predominantly just working with yourself, then there's some uh, space to consider bringing concern, considering yourself into focus. Don't don't throw it away. Add it to. Go ahead and keep it and add to it more of the ingredients of loving your neighbor for the love of God, for loving God. And then you become more in balance, right? So that is the growth. So if you're an introvert, it's okay. You know, we'll just pick up where you're at. Or you see other introverts, it's okay. You can pray for them too. And believe and have faith that God wants you to become a balanced whole person, right? So let's look at I know, it's strong medicine. Stick with me. It's it's okay. <laughs> I know that many people, you know, they get down on themselves. You don't have to get down on yourself, okay? This isn't about getting down. This is about being, see what the issues are and how we can do better and how we can believe that God will help us do better, okay? So you're not doing this on your own strength, all right? Here we go. So extroverts, the same thing, okay? We've got, we've got another issue way on the range here on the scale on extrovert, okay? So a person concerned primarily with the physical and social environment. And it says opposed to introvert. So it's the opposite of introvert. Primarily concerned with the physical and social environment. Okay. So if we look at that. Loving God with your whole heart, might, and soul. And loving your neighbor as yourself. How does that fit with getting all three of those categories, loving God, loving your neighbor as yourself. How does that fit? You see? All right. Now I'll, I'll interpret it for you. I just want to give you some time to think about it on your own because exercising your discernment will help you get better and better at it yourself and be able to balance out for yourself and actually help others to balance out too. So this is good. All right. I would say that a person concerned primarily, you know, and the more off the scale you get to where you're more concerned only, uh, you know, going to more to only or, or 98% or, you know, even 60% um, with the physical and social environment and not necessarily considering yourself or God. See, you can be an extrovert because... Um, you're trying to be accepted, you know, you can, you can be concerned about what other people think and trying to get to a place where you're accepted by them. And so you get concerned about the physical and social environment in that way. Is that, is that a healthy way to come from a place of fear and concern? Is not the scriptures say that love casts out all fear? There is no fear in love. For love casts out all fear. See? So that's what we're doing. We're applying what love is and seeing what fear is. You can also be an, an extrovert um, um, for causes. You know, all kinds of causes. And uh, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. I, I already know. I'm probably going to get some people that are going to be upset with what I'm about to say. But if you're primarily concerned about animals over God or over people and um, you think that's the love of God there may be some imbalance there because according to the law love God with your whole heart mind and soul and love your neighbors yourself sure animals and and the environment is important to take care of and it's important to love because God loves it, it, it that's important but not to the exclusion of trying to put other people down for it. Hmm? Yeah, I know. I mean, I'll probably do another podcast on that. And, um, the, you know, you'll probably try to throw stones at me or, or rotten tomatoes. I know. <laughs> but we need to touch these always. We need to touch these areas so that we can grow up and uh, healthily in the spirit, right? Um, so what I'm showing you is, is that being an introvert, if you're too much on the scale of one way, or an extrovert on the other side of the scale, can be um, a place that may need some uh, evaluation to balance out. And where you're weak, to pray to God to help you where you're weak and where you're falling down in one of those aspects of loving God. In other words, considering God all day and what you're doing, do it for God. Right? So, you know, there's a scripture that says, whatever your hand finds to do it, do it as unto the Lord. 
right? So that's what we're trying to do all the time, everything we do, as unto the Lord. Whether it's being quiet and taking some personal time, so that that way we can be refreshed, so that then we have enough resources uh, and calmness to be able to help other people gently and more effectively and more beautifully, for the love of God is okay. To be out there and talking to other people and being gregarious, yeah, I don't know anything about that, <laughs> um, you know, is great too, as, as long as I'm balancing out considering you know, thinking about God and, and uh, thinking about myself. I can get to places sometimes where I'm so involved with a task um, that I forget to eat. I forget maybe that I'm tired and I, my body needs to rest, right? I'm doing better and better at staying slow and staying connected to evaluate if I'm falling within the, in a good, healthy way of loving God with my whole heart and loving my neighbor as myself, I'm better and better at going slow and doing that. And I'm getting healthier and healthier because of it. And that's why I'm teaching it. So, I have a new word, a type of overt that I think is, I made it up. Okay, this is my own definition. This is Katrina. I'm a, I'm a real goofball at times. I can come up with some crazy stuff. So here is my definition that I think is healthy. You can evaluate with the, with, with the glasses on of loving God with your whole heart, mind, and soul, and loving your neighbors yourself. We are learning how to be God-overts. <laughs> yeah, good one, huh? God-overts. <laughs> so it's a balance. So my definition of a God-overt is a person predominantly concerned with loving God with their whole heart, might, and soul, and loving their neighbor as themselves, all three, all the time, for the love of God. So, would you like to become a God overt with me? <laughs> we'll start a new trend. We'll start our own club, and, and that is the whole point, because that's becoming like Christ. Christ was a God overt. Right? You know that actually Christ died for, for a, um, a reason for himself as well. He died for a reason for himself in that he wanted to be a part of redeeming us back. He wanted to buy us back. He wanted us. And he paid the biggest price possible to make sure that we could be bought back for him. He wanted us as a prized possession. He wanted to have us. See? So he did it for healthy reasons. And he did it for the love of God because God himself, his father, his daddy, was asking him and calling him to do it. And he did it willingly. So he did what he did for us. He died for the sins of the whole world. For himself to bring us back to him because he desires us and loves us so much. And for God the Father who called him, who loves us and desires us and wants every good thing for us. He created everything in perfection. He wanted us to have abundance and fruitfulness and multiplication and joy and all those things. And when we fell, and all of us are part of that fall, not just Adam and Eve, then it became something that became sick. And we're trying to get out of the sickness. And the way to get out of the sickness is in the two greatest commandments, going back to that. Even when the world is not going back to that, right? Christ died when we were still um, uh, not his friends. We were enemies of him. Even as enemies, he died for us. Even for his enemies, until we could become his friends, right? He didn't take offense out of that and say, well, if you don't like me, then I'm not going to die for you. <laughs> he said, you don't get it. I get that you don't understand right now, but I'm going to die for you now and let you know how much I love you. Hmm? So that's what we get to do. We get to learn on that path, on that narrow path I just explained in 25 minutes what the narrow path looks like. See? Isn't that nice? So if you want to give comments, please do right here on the channel or be able to get a hold of Tim uh, and myself at escapealltheseThings.com. We'd love to hear from you. We want to hear testimonies of how this information uh, helps you to get closer to God, helps you to be able to become more healthy and come out of the prisons because the way out of oppression, depression, 
imprisonment and fear is love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. All right. Blessings to you all.